monkey here. Oh, monkeys. I have a lot of shade, so I don't have to laugh. I'm sorry. There's really, there's really not much you can do about it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to make fun of your, your question, but unfortunately with aquaponics, some people come to it with the idea that there's some kind of magic going to happen and they can grow things ten times faster, three times bigger, and they can do it without sunlight and they can, you know, you can't. You, standard gardening rules apply. If there's no sunlight, the plants won't grow. They'll be spindly, they, they just won't grow. So you have to do something about going chopping some of that forest down or, or something. Aquaponic chainsaw, it's one solution, yeah. Now you just you just have to have sunlight to make the plants grow. Hi Murray, I know we're all thrilled to have you here. So You're so happy? I said we're very thrilled to have you here. I really Oh, I thought you your said you're happy. Aquaponics, yeah, I'm very happy. Aquaponics <laughs> makes people happy. <laughs> but yesterday and the day before, I heard you mention the M word a couple times for Monsanto. Oh, and sorry, should I not have said that? Yeah, well, I mean, all this technical information is great, but if the government basically stands in our way, which they're trying very much to do, what would you recommend for us? I know you talked about civil disobedience, but most of us are busy at our work life. So what would you recommend? if you were to depart the world today, what would you leave back for us to guide us through stopping the government from stopping us and controlling seeds like they have in Europe? I, I don't really know the answer to that, I'm sorry. and I, That's why I believe so much in people power. What we're doing here that's happened this weekend I think is just absolutely marvellous and is, is probably the only solution to the future is that we have a lot of people power. And we have to spread the word about this as much as we can. And the wonderful thing about aquaponics is it excites people, doesn't it? You found that, TC? They, people just get excited. They come and they see the plants and they get, oh, they want to do it, they can't sleep. And we said last night, who had that experience, you know, that it actually works. And, and the more people we can get involved in gardening, because I believe that as, as human beings we have some gene built into us or whatever it is, we get some kind of satisfaction out of growing plants. We really do. And it's something you can't explain. But, you know, you find a lot of older people want to grow plants. They don't even know why. But you grow plants, you grow things. It's just part of the human condition. So it's attractive to people. And when, when you can deliver to them a system that actually works, you know, because a lot of people have tried gardening and failed, you know, all the darn things die. And, and you do this aquaponics and it just works. What can I say? More people power the better. Here's a lady. Is that the $1,000 lady? Oh, I think. I think it is. Yes, hi. Um, another uh, big input in the system is in the fish food. And there are lots of controversy about the different types of fish food. And I know some people trying to feed it duckweed and grains and sprouts and uh, perhaps the, the barley that left over after the making beer. Um, I just wonder, what's your experience? Like, will duckweed maybe clog the system or is there a way to go around it? Or what's your experience? Maybe somebody else can share. I, I use duckweed a lot at my place. We grow it. It grows very beautifully. It grows so well. Anyone that's grown it will know that. Who grows duckweed? It just multiplies, I think it's double every three days, isn't it, in the summertime? If the conditions are right, it's just amazing and it's about 40% protein. It's a wonderful fish food. And our fish in Australia, jade perch and silver perch, they're basically vegetarian, although they will eat other things. Um, if I'm away for a week like I am this week, I just fill up the tanks with duckweed and go away and forget about it. The fish are cool. No. Oh, some of it will go in the grow beds, but I don't care. Yeah. No, no. Duckweed's amazing stuff if you start to read about it. It's one of the few plants that can be in, um, you know, water that's polluted with heavy metals and that sort of thing, and it doesn't it doesn't take the heavy metals into itself. Pardon? It fixes nitrogen out of the air. It does too, yeah. It's an amazing little plant. And um, I, w I would imagine we're not allowed to have tilapia in Australia. It's a $130,000 fine if you're caught with one. Um, dead or alive. But, you know, I think duckweed is going to be a principal part of almost any, any solution for the future, personally, that's what I think, combined with other things. Hmm. As, as to using pellets, I, I feed my fish pellets. And I think we've got to realise that the road, the road to sustainability is a journey. You know, we can't, we can't solve every problem today. But I think it's very obvious into the future somewhere, and I hope this association will do some work on it, is on fish food, you know, alternative fish foods. Uh, some people get really hung up on it right now and they go, oh, we're destroying the oceans, you know, and it's bad, you're doing this aquaponics and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, we're not destroying them right now. In fact, we're creating a solution. And, and that's going to take some time to, to, to arrive at the, at the end of the road. In the meantime, I buy pellets. I buy the best ones I can. 
and I feed my, my fish duckweed and other things, lettuce and all sorts of stuff they get. So, you know, and tilapia are good for that as well. Did anyone have a question? Yeah. <coughs> Silly question. Silly question. Yeah. I do, I remember you, yeah. I only drink orange juice, I remember you well. Have <laughs> um, you got your... the microphone there? What is it? Oh, sorry. Um, in one of your YouTube videos, you show this, uh, uh, I think you call the NFT system, the pipes. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your, your water is so clear, you know, and I just wonder what kind of filtration you use and where is in that, in that particular system. Grow beds filled with three quarter inch gravel. Inside the... No, no, the, grub. the water has come from the sump and then put through the NFT channels. And the, and the filtration, where is the filter? It's been gone through the grow beds first. Gone through the gravel grow beds. Yeah. The gravel grow beds are the filter. Um, some people really worry about adding additional filtration. Now, that, that is a good thing to do if you're raising fish like trout, for example, that require really, really good clean water. Um, you might want to put a, an additional filter into your, your loop to make sure the water is really, really clean. Barramundi are another breed of fish that require absolutely pristine water, otherwise they get sick and die. But tilapia and other breeds of fish are much more tolerant. And um, for homeowners, I mean, if you're going to get serious about it and go commercial and stuff like that, you need to think about filtration to make sure your system's running well. But for the average homeowner, your mum and dad, they go to work every day, they want to do aquaponics, but they don't have to spend three hours a day on it, cleaning a filter every Friday and all that sort of stuff. So if you've just got enough gra gravel grow beds and you have the right fish load, you can have a really easy to run system. Yeah.